Now we're gonna do problems that I call overhill and underhill. So these are problems where you imagine a ball or a mass on a track, and you wanna know how fast does it need to go to stay on the track. So this is underhill. This is the balls on a loop track. How fast does it need to go? So you have this intuition that if it goes really fast, it easily stays on the loop, like that. And if it goes slower, it's kind of maybe it'll stay on, oh, barely. And if it's too slow, it'll fall off the track. So the question is, how fast does it need to go? So let's see what we get. So how slow, in the case of Underhill, how slow can you go and stay on? So let's draw it real quick. It was a loop track. We'll pretend it was a perfect circle like that. And you've got a mass approaching the loop at some velocity. Of course, it's going to slow down and then speed back up. What you really care about is how fast does it need to be going when it's at the top. So we'll say this is the velocity we want, actually. Okay. How fast does it need to be going to stay on, or how slow can it go? We say how slow can it go, because when it's going really fast, it'll definitely stay on. And as you slow down more and more, eventually it'll fall off. So it's really a, a, the lowest speed that you can go. So to get it, you use everything we've been learning about in this, uh, this unit. You draw a free body diagram, and you say, let's see, there's mg down, pulling it down. And what other forces are there? Well, the track pushes on it. There's a normal force. We don't just think about a normal force when something is sitting on a table. We also think about a normal force when things are moving. So there's also a force down I could draw like that and call it in. So free body diagram, forces, and now we apply the laws of physics. And we say the sum of the forces, um, sum of the forces is ma. Newton's second law. We're just going to do it in this direction, down, because that's where all the forces are. Right? So really, we're doing it sort of in the radial direction or the centripetal direction, whichever one you, you want to think about, because we're really, at this point, we're talking about circular motion. It's not really circular motion going up and down, because the acceleration is at some weird direction relative to the velocity. But at this moment, all the forces and accelerations are this way. The velocity is this way. So at this moment, it is in uniform circular motion. So let's look. We're going to define also just for this problem, we're going to say positive or down, downward is positive. Right? So down is a positive direction. So let's add up our forces. We have mg down positive. We have n, the normal force, is pushing down. So it's positive. And then we have uh, m, the mass. And then the acceleration. In this case, at this moment, when it is in uniform circular motion at v, is v squared over r. It's just the centripetal acceleration. v squared over, and I'm going to call it big R because it's a constant radius of the track, and v squared over r. Let's see. You might say, oh, but I thought the acceleration had to be down. The acceleration is down. Remember? So v squared over r, even though v is this way, it's in a centripetal acceleration. It does have an acceleration down like that, ac. Go ahead and call it AC. Okay. All right, so then we look at these terms, and this is where we can kind of try to intuit what's going on. We got this term because it's circular motion. That is just the acceleration you need, and we know it points down towards the center of the circle. This term, though, is constant, mg. This force doesn't change. So if we want to go at variable speeds and have different um, mv squared over r, different centripetal acceleration in time of the mass, we're going to have to have different forces. And mg can't change, so it must be that the normal force changes. And we know that it does. If you go slowly around the track, the track barely had to push you around. If you go faster on the track, the track has to push really hard. Right? So what you want to think about is that the normal force is variable but, this is the big part, um, it only points down. A normal force can't pull you back up. It can't suck. Right? A normal force only pushes in the direction normal to the surface. So it's not, this normal force has to change to make it all work, but it's not continuously variable to any value. It can be zero, and it can go um, to a higher value. So one way to solve these is just kind of intuitively say, well, the limiting speed then must be when this is zero, so I solve for v. 
And that is correct. That's how you do the problem. But let's look at it and see if we can do that a little more mathematically, just if that makes you feel better. Let's solve for the normal force as a function of the speed. So what normal force are you going to get for any speed that you go? And you turn this around, and this comes over here. Oh, no, this goes over there, and you pull out the m, and you get that the normal force is m times v squared over r minus g. So that's fine. That means that the faster it goes, the bigger normal force you need. That's fine. But then you remember, no, the normal force can only point down. We've defined down as positive. The normal force can never be negative. So you say, but n is always greater than or equal to 0. Right. Well, if this is always greater than or equal to 0, then this must always be greater than or equal to 0. All right, and you cancel the m because it's 0 on that side. And you say, oh, v squared over r must be greater than or equal to g. You say, OK. Then this velocity, this critical slowest velocity you've got is that v must always be greater than or equal to the square root of gr. And this is mathematically the answer. v must be greater than or equal to that. How slow can you go and stay on would be the equal. You can get down to the square root of g times r. If you go faster than that, you'll be fine. If you go slower, you basically uh, have too much gravity pulling you down. The normal force is all the way to zero. So if you want to accelerate slower than that, you got too much force. And that's why you fall. So that is underhill. Next, we'll do overhill.